What is up guys? Welcome to week one of NPL Miners. We are here today for our very first matchup out of 10 in the first 10 weeks. Uh, hoping to make it to playoffs. And of course, week one we get paired up against our Kryptonite in league format, Jar. And uh, <clears throat> I have one other Kryptonite, which is Merc. Uh, but yeah, so uh, not fun having to play one of my best friends week one. But uh, we're going to have to deal with it. Uh, you guys know our team if you watch the draft recap. Let's go over Jar's team real quick. He's got Mega Metacham, Necrozma, Thunderous, Incarnate, which is his Zemon, uh, Heatran, Hydreigon, uh, Roserade, Milotic, Ambipom, Flygon, and Comfey. I helped him draft uh, this team. I made some of his picks for him. Uh, wasn't really content with Ambi Ambipom, but uh, for the, the amount of points that he had left, uh, that's pretty much all I could snuff out. So... Uh, looking at his team, he doesn't have a lot of hazard removal. His only hazard removal is Flygon. Uh, chances of it coming are pretty low. I do have a Mega Blastoise. I have a uh, Mamoswine, which you can see on screen, of course, uh, which is going to be our first Mon. Uh, he's got um, a lot of things that are weak to, to Mamoswine, essentially. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Um, so, going over the team, first Mon I decided to bring, like I said, is going to be uh, Vastia, the uh, Mamoswine Choice Scarf. Uh, I was hoping that it would be able to beat out Thunderous Incarnate. Um, Scarf Heatran, if it's modest, uh, I believe I do outspeed. Let me uh, check that real quick. Uh, it hits 253, so no. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I was outspeeding. His base 115, what was it again? Um, Ambipom, yeah, that's right. So I was outspeeding Ambipom. I didn't think about Scarf Heatran, so uh, I decided to go with this speed. This allowed me to go Adamant as well. So, uh, yeah, 72 HP, pretty nice. Uh, Icicle Crash, Earthquake. Ice Shard is just there uh, in case I need it late game against Hydreigon, uh, Thunderous, Roserade. This Mon does really well against him in general. Uh, his Metacham can't be Scarfed, so Earthquake does a lot of damage, especially coming from an Adamant Mamoswine. And I've got Toxic on there. Now, I debated the last move being Iron Head, as it does hit the Comfy. Um, but I decided against it because I, f I felt like Toxic would be better overall, uh, being able to hit his Milotic on the Switch, which was his uh, main response to my Mamoswine. If it did come as an offensive variant. Obviously, he has a lot of things that can just outright outspeed it uh, and knock it out if it's not Scarfed. And if it is Scarfed, it's a little bit less of a threat because it can't deal as much damage to Milotic. So, uh, probably should have put Iron Head on here and you guys are going to see why later. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, this is the Mamoswine set. Moving on to the next Pokemon, Cobalion. Ren, I've got uh, 250 to attack, making it as offensive as possible. Really speedy, faster than his base 100. Uh, Metacham, faster than Hydreigon if it's not Scarfed. Uh, faster than Heatran if it's not Scarfed. Basically, a lot of his mons, including Flygon. Uh, Iron Head, Stealth Rock, Toxic, and Close Combat. So, Close Combat, of course, to be able to hit the Ambipom and the Heatran. And uh, Iron Head is there specifically for the Cum fan to be able to chip away at Metacham, uh, mainly. Make sure I have something to hit it. Stealth Rocks, of course, are going to help tremendously against this team. Uh, like I said, he doesn't have a lot of hazard removal. He only has Flygon, so Thunderous getting chipped is always nice. Necrozma as well. Roserade on the Switch. Milotic to ensure some two hit or three hit KOs. Uh, always nice. And Toxic once again there for the... Mainly for the Necrozma, because it can outright wall me. If not, um, I can Toxic and flinch it down with Iron Head. Um, Possibly and it's also there for the Milotic switch because Milotic also answers to Cobalion relatively safely in general So yeah, that's uh, Cobalion <coughs> Ren moving on to Loxer the Blastoise now uh, as you can see my team doesn't have any hazard removal uh, Blastoise is the only possible option and I decided not to run it because one rocks don't affect me too heavily as three of my mons have recovery uh, in uh, Cresselia uh, you're, you're gonna see Loxus over here, the Vikavolt, and uh, Mira the Umbreon all have recovery, and Ren is on leftovers. So, I didn't feel like I needed hazard removal. He does have access to Toxic Spikes and Roserade, which I did consider as an option. I did feel like Roserade was going to come, but I don't feel like Rapid Spinning is going to be that much of an issue anyway, because I do have Heal Bell, one, and two, again, only three of my mons are affected by Toxic Spikes. So... Uh, I really didn't feel like it was that great an option. I definitely needed this coverage. Dark Pulse is able to hit uh, Mega Metacham pretty hard. Necrozma for super effective damage. Uh, it's able to flinch down Milotic possibly. Uh, I did make sure that I was actually outspeeding a no speed heat ran with, uh, with this set. Just in case that's what he decided to bring. Uh, I do have Ice Beam on here for the uh, Hydreigon uh, as well as the Flygon. Hydro Pump is mainly for the, uh, well, to get off as hard hits as possible and to hit the heat round, of course. And Flash Cannon was here specifically for the Comfy because I knew that thing would be a problem. So I decided to bring Flash Cannon. 
uh, not realizing that special coverage against a Kumfei is not really going to help. Uh, so yeah, Iron Head on this would have been a lot better, but anyway, we got Flash Cannon. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Cresselia. This is my answer to his Mega Metacham, which otherwise would be a huge threat. I've got Rocky Helmet. With this investment, I can live uh, two adamant high jump kicks after rocks uh, pretty safely and uh, just be able to moonlight off the damage. And if he continues to high jump kick me, he's going to go down to Rocky Helmet eventually. Um, what's really cool about this set is um, I've got uh, Trick Room on here, which helps out uh, Blastoise and it also helps out Vikavolt in the late game so that could be clutch um, as you guys are gonna see I don't have uh, like absolute min speed on uh, Vikavolt because I don't feel I need it I don't feel like Trick Room is that obvious so uh, Moonblast Ice Beam obviously able to hit the High Dragon the uh, the Roserade uh, the Flygon I don't want to be walled out completely by Flygon uh, Moonlight of course for the uh, for just recovery because I don't have leftovers and Trick Room. Pretty standard set. The uh, Spadef is also to be able to take Hydragon's hits relatively well. If it's Life Orb, I believe it does a max of 48% to me. Um, Life Orb Timid. So I can definitely live its hit fire back and Moonblast if it's already weakened and knock it out. So uh, that's Cresselia for you. And then we have Loxus, the uh, Vikavolt, Thunderbolt, Bug Buzz, Hidden Power Ground, and Roost. In my mock battle, I actually caught uh, Heat Ran on the Switch with Hidden Power Ground, so that was fun. Uh, Thunderbolt is very nice for his team. Uh, hits Thunderous pretty hard. Uh, Milotic, that's the main thing. I w this is pretty much a safe switch into Milotic almost every time uh, because I do have Roost and uh, because of the HP, uh, max HP on this thing. So I can take its Scalds very easily. They do like a max of 29%. Uh, and even if he burns me, I can just uh, Roost off the damage. So uh, that's that. Uh, I can't hit Flygon for super effective. Bug Buzz still does a lot though. It still does a very good amount. So I'm not too worried about that. Uh, plus I do have Cresselia, which has Ice Beam, so I can switch into Cresselia on the Flygon, as long as it's not, uh, like, Banded Outrage, Banded Adamant Outrage, I can pretty much take it, so, uh, that's that, uh, like I said, Thunderbolt, Bug Buzz across his team does very well, and Hidden Power Ground is, uh, ground is specifically for the Heat Ran, uh, and then finally we have Mira, the Umbreon, be able to heal up my Cresselia, it's a pretty standard set, it's Max Spit Up, because I needed something to take on the Thunderous at least a little bit, uh, as well as the Heat Ran, the High Dragon, uh, Focus Blast from a Life Orb Modest Hydragon, I believe, does have potential to 2-hit KO even after Leftovers and Protect. So uh, I'm going to have to watch out for that. Uh, we've got Foul Play on there, of course, for uh, catching the Metacham switch and be able to chip down Heat Ran if it's not Leftovers. Uh, be able to chip Roserade, Ambipom, Flygon, all that stuff. Uh, his physical setup sweepers can't set up on me necessarily, uh, except if his Mega Metacham is bulk up, of course. Um, but Flygon can't Dragon Dance on me, um, Bulk Up Thundee I guess kinda can, uh, but at the same time it's probably not beating me 1v1 because he does reduce his own attack through superpower, so, uh, there's that. And Heal Bell, like I said, is, be is gonna be able to clear off all the status from his, uh, specifically, uh, for Cresselia because I know that his Mega Metacham will run Toxic, I'm 100% sure of that, so, uh, just being able to cover that is very nice, uh, and Protect obviously to be able to snuff out the, uh, the High Jump Kick. Uh, you guys are going to see in the game that does actually come into play. So let's jump into the game and I'll show you guys what, uh, what went down. All right, so here we are. Uh, we are at the replay. And as you can see, he brought the Mega Metacham, the Necrozma, the Thunderous, uh, Roserade, Comfy, and Heat Ran. Now, I was really surprised not to see Milotic. That was the main thing. Uh, I was shocked, in fact, not to see Milotic. Uh, but I guess the rest of the team makes, made sense. It was kind of like a toss up between. Uh, Heat Ran, Comfy, and Milotic, which two of the three he wanted to bring. The rest of the team was pretty obvious. I did expect to come, so I uh, was well prepped for it, I felt. So uh, let's uh, hop into the game and we'll see how it went. So I'm going to lead off with Cobalion. It's got a pretty good lead matchup in general, and he's, he, he's going to lead off with Necrozma. Right away, I'm going to get up my rocks because uh, I see no hazard removal, so those are going to be up for the rest of the game. As he's going to get up his, I'm going to Toxic as Necrozma as he's going to reveal Earthquake. Uh, it's going to do a decent chunk to me, 45%, which reveals to me that he's pretty uh, attack invested, I feel like, uh, because regular Earthquakes don't do that much. So I'm going to switch into Mira the Umbreon on the next Earthquake. He's going to... Uh, take another round of toxic which is very nice after leftovers so i do see those uh, i'm just going to set up a wish on this turn as he's going to switch out into his comfey uh, which i am worried about so i'm going to pass this wish immediately into my cobalion knowing that comfey can't do too much damage to me as he's going to reveal his first move on this thing uh, which is going to be aromatherapy and uh, i'm going to now fire off uh, an iron head and uh, at this point i should have predicted the heat round to come in because it's pretty obvious and uh, I'm just going to go for the Iron Head. Now, 
Uh, I'm actually gonna go for the toxic, excuse me. So I want to be able to stall the uh, Comfey out of uh, aromatherapies potentially, uh, and this also catches any switch that isn't Roserade or um, Heat Ran so, uh, that he wanted to go into. So if he wanted to go back into the Krasma and start off the the loop again, uh, I was I would be able to catch that. But he does go into Heat Ran, and this is gonna be a recurring theme throughout this game. Is he's gonna keep switching in this Heat Ran? on my Cobalion as if I can't hit it for super effective damage. Now I'm going to switch out obviously and I'm going to go out into my Blastoise uh, knowing full well that this isn't a Zemon. He's going to go for a Fire Blast and because I see Fire Blast immediately I'm thinking Choice. I calc the damage and it's not Specs so I'm thinking Scarf on this Heatran right away and I'm like okay that makes sense that he brought it in on Cobalion like that because if I was uh, let's say an Adamant set with close combat I could have heavily hurt him his other possible uh, item is gonna be Choppa Berry I don't see leftovers so I know he's not defensive more than likely offensive this fire blast damage does tell me that he is offensive so now I'm just gonna go for the dark pulse it does hit pretty much everything on the switch he goes into his Roserade very nice play as uh, I'm gonna get off a solid 40 uh, ish percent 54 excuse me uh, now I do have ice beam However, Roserade with a grass move is able to obliterate uh, Blastoise, and he obviously is faster than me. Uh, so I am just going to switch out here as he's going to make a nice play and go for the Synthesis on the switch out. I could have hit this thing very hard with, a, with an Ice Beam, but it's fine. He's going to get off the Synthesis, and uh, now I'm going to try to flinch down this Roserade as, as it's the only option I really have to wear it down. And uh, Iron Head's going to do a, a decent amount. I am going to get a flinch on the first turn. I'm not going to get one on the following turn, and he is going to be able to Synth back up. But I'm trying to wear out the Synthesis, Aromatherapy, Synthesis, all these moves that have 8 PP. I'm going to try to stall them out a little bit. So I do have Wish Protect, Wish Passing on the team. So I'm able to keep some longevity across my team. I have some recovery in uh, Vikavolt and Cresselia if you did watch the team builder. So I'm going to go for another Iron Head here as he's going to go for the Synthesis. And now he's healthy. And this is where I should predict him to switch out, but I don't. I don't make an aggressive play, and he's able to get in his Heat Ran relatively easily. Again, on my Cobalion. So, uh, I'm going to Iron Head this thing. Now he's in range of a close combat after rocks very easily, if he's not Choppel Berry. So, the next time he tries to do this, I will probably predict and go for a uh, close combat. As he's going to Fire Blast, he's going to get a crit on my Cresselia. No big deal. Next one won't knock me out unless he crits me again. So, I'm gonna, just going to Moonlight up. Now, he brings in Thunderous, and the way he brings this in makes me think that he is set up and he's trying to get an opportunity to set up on my moonlight uh so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually gonna go hard mammoth swine here and uh i'm gonna take the rocks i'm gonna take the poison uh from the toxic spike and he is gonna go for nasty plot so lucky for me uh also dark pulse wouldn't have knocked me out so i would have still had my mammoth swine alive and i would be able to wish pass into it later potentially so uh i am just gonna go for the scarf icicle crash here he doesn't see it coming and he's gonna let his thunderous go down so first big threat gone awesome all right so that's out of the way now he's going to go into his uh, Metacham, and this is obviously a big threat, so I'm going to switch out of here, and I'm going to go straight into my Cresselia, knowing that more than likely a Fake Out is coming out. He doesn't want to catch a Scarf Icicle Crash right off the bat without dealing damage first. He's going to take a Rocky Helmet hit on my Cresselia, then he's going to go for Toxic. Like I said in the Team Builder, this is more than likely to come. The one good way to deal with Cresselia, if you can't hit it for super effective, and all your moves are resisted, uh, is to go for Toxic on it and wear it down gradually. So I'm just going to... Uh, now go for a Trick Room on this Comfey, and uh, knowing that he had to switch out his Metacham, what I should have done was actually predicted something else to come in, uh, and made a hard switch into either my Blastoise or my uh, Vikavolt to catch any switch. Uh, that would have probably been the better play, but I'm actually just going to stay in and get up a Trick Room. I'm now going to go into my Cobalion, as he's going to go for a Calm Mind, and uh, now that I see Calm Mind, I'm like, okay, so Calm Mind, Draining Kiss, uh, Aromatherapy. I think I can deal with this relatively easily. Uh, now he's going to switch out into his Heat Ran, uh, sorry, into his Necrozma on my Iron Head, and he's going to take it quite well. Now the Trick Room is up, of course, so this is a little bit of a problem because I actually gave him a faster Necrozma than my Cobalion. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go into Umbreon. I do get poisoned as he's going to go for the Earthquake. And uh, looking by that damage after Leftovers and um, Poison, I can live the next Earth, uh, the next two Earthquakes. So I'm actually going to go for a Heal Bell, take off the Poison, make sure that I can live two, as he's just going to go for another one, trying to get a KO on me. And what I'm going to do here, of course, is just Wish. And on the following turn, Protect. Now, what I should have actually done uh, on the following turn was not gone for Protect and gone for an attack, uh, predicting him to switch out on my Protect, knowing that I'd want to keep my Umbreon healthy for his Heat Ran later in the game now that I know that it's choice. So, uh, I am going to go for Protect, unfortunately, but this actually ends up working out because I'm going to get a ton of health back, and uh, for some reason, Jar kind of had a lapse in judgment, and he forgot that I could Protect again, 
and he goes for high jump kick and deals 50% to himself, which is really nice for me, as uh, I'm going to switch out into Cresselia here, uh, and basically this Metacham is going to go down in a couple of turns, so uh, he is going to go for another high jump kick here, he's going to deal 32% to me, uh, which reveals to me that he was jolly, and uh, I'm going to go for a Moonlight on his Toxic, and knowing that he's probably not going to switch out because he is in Rock's range and he doesn't have Hazard Removal, I'm just going to Moonlight again knowing that he's going to attack me, and I'm going to get back up to a decent amount of health, and he's going to end up killing himself to the Rocky Helmet, and uh, that's the end of the Mega Metacham, so now I have a an 88% Cresselia, uh, sitting here against a uh, w what seems to be a not so s offensive strong team anymore. I'm up 6-4 and it's looking really good. So I'm going to switch out. I'm going to go directly into my Cobalion, of course, as he is going to go for a Draining Kiss. Now, uh, had I stayed in there, I would have actually noticed something that would have been very, very crucial later in the game, which is that Draining Kiss makes contact even though it's a special move, you don't see a lot of special moves make contact. Uh, two of the uh, most common ones are Draining Kiss and uh, Grass Knot. But I would have remembered, <clears throat> excuse me, the Draining Kiss makes contact and he would have ended up hurting himself to my Rocky Helmet and I would have been able to start wearing him down. So uh, that was actually a misplay on my part going into Cobalion. Uh, now again, I am just going to go for an Iron Head as once again he goes into Heat Ran, so I didn't predict it. Once again, he gets in his Heat Ran for free. Uh, at that point, it didn't really matter because if I did go for Close Combat, then he could bring back in Comfey and uh, start Draining Kissing me for a little more damage. As you guys saw right there, it did uh, not too much, only 18%. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go into my Cresselia once again. He does get a crit, I believe, on this turn with the Fire Blast. Uh, no, it's not this turn, excuse me. Uh, as I am going to Moonlight up, he's going to go for another Fire Blast. Uh, he's going to do 33%. I'm going to get up to a decent amount of health. Now, what I actually should have done here was gone for Trick Room, knowing that I would go down to the Fire Blast plus Poison, because uh, I would have been able to get into my Vikavolt, and Vikavolt deals a ton of damage to him uh, across his entire team uh, with Bug Buzz and Thunderbolt alone. So, I'm actually going to go out into Umbreon here, as he is going to miss a Fire Blast. So I'm trying to wear him out of Fire Blast as well. Again, another 8 PP move. And uh, I'm just going to go for the Heal Bell. Oh, no, the Wish here. Excuse me. I'm going to go for the Wish. And uh, Jar makes a very smart play, knowing that I would prioritize Heal Belling off the damage on Cresselia because I did need it uh, still in this game. It did look it still look very good. Uh, he's going to get up a Calm Mind. And now this is an issue because now I'm an Umbreon against the Comfey, and he has a Calm Mind up. And I don't really have a good switch into this. So I'm going to go into my Cobalion as he's going to get up another Calm Mind, and he actually reveals on this following turn, I haven't seen an item yet, he reveals to be Babiri Berry. He does 38% to me with this Draining Kiss now, and uh, he takes my, uh, my Iron Head a little too well, and now I'm kind of panicking. So I'm going to go for another Iron Head as he, he heals up almost to full again, uh, as I'm going to bring him down to about 40. He's going to go up to, well, he's at 38%, and uh, he can kill me here. <laughs> with this uh, with this attack. So I'm going to go into Cresselia, and had I remembered that Draining Kiss um, did this, uh, well, took uh, damage from making contact to Rocky Helmet, I would have gone to Cresselia first and gone for a Moonlight because he would have never been able to heal up and I could start hitting him with Moon Blasts and trying to uh, lower his special attack in the process. So I think that would have been the correct play, the better play. However, I did burn his Babiri Berry, which leaves me open to Flash Cannoning with, uh, with Blastoise. But now I have a serious problem because Toxic Spikes are up. Um, my Mamoswine is weakened because of the earlier turns against the, th the Thunderous. Uh, my Blastoise is weakened because of taking that Fire Blast earlier. Uh, my Vikavolt is a special attacker. My Cobalion is in range of a Draining Kiss. And uh, Umbreon can't take this thing on 1v1. Draining Kiss, I believe, only has 16 PP. He's wasted quite a few, so what I'm going to try to do is uh, stall them out, essentially. I'm going to try to get off some damage on this, of course, as he's going to go for a Draining Kiss, and I'm going to go for an Earthquake. It does a lot of damage. It does 50%, uh, and I am going to go down to Poison, uh, which is actually nice because he doesn't get any more recovery. Now I'm going to go on to Blastoise, and I'm going to fire off a Flash Cannon. Now, if I had Iron Head, this Flash Cannon might have been a roll uh, to knock him out, but because I didn't have Iron Head on Mamoswine, uh, I'm not even close with the Flash Cannon. I needed a crit somewhere, either the Earthquake or the Flash Cannon, um, 
he's gonna get off another draining kiss right there he's gonna go back up to 25 percent which doesn't seem like much but look at the rest of my team uh, i'm now gonna go into my vikavolt as he's gonna go for a, a draining kiss crit which is a little unfortunate because he goes up quite a bit of hp and now he's finally gonna reveal his last move which is pr pretty much gonna shut out the game for me it's taunt so i can't even roost stall this thing uh, out of draining kisses, which is really unfortunate. Obviously, he could start calm minding up further uh, and beat me 1v1, but I was trying to uh, condition him into not doing that, uh, but that didn't end up working out because he does have taunt. So uh, at this point, I'm just trying to get a para. Uh, maybe I can full para this thing on an iron head uh, while it's down at 50% or 60% to where I can knock it out. But uh, that's not going to happen, as he's going to pretty much win the game with a Kumfei. And he's going to get six kills with this thing, uh, because I was not... Uh, actually, I think one of the kills goes to uh, Medicham, because uh, Cresselia was poisoned, and I believe it went down to poison, uh, if I'm not mistaken. No, I got off the heal bell. So yeah, no, 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 this is six kills to Kumfei. Uh, so um, I... Umbreon, of course, gets taunted, gets Draining Kiss and crit on the following turn. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go for Foul Play because that's all I can do at this point. And uh, as Comfey has enough boost to where I can knock out both my Umbreon and my Cobalion. So uh, we do end up losing to the Comfey. Don't sleep on Comfey, man. It's it's really, really good. Maddie used it really well last season. Jar's using it really well already this season. Uh, we did talk a little bit about, uh, about the game. Uh, he did see the opening with Comfey, so kudos to him. Uh, he did a great job recognizing that this thing could sweep. Good good call with the Babiri Berry as well, knowing that Cobalion was the only physical attacker that could really do damage to it. Uh, other than Bulu and Victini, which was kind of surprising to see uh, that he didn't have a great check to Bulu. Because realistically, I could just run Stone Edge, Zen Headbutt, and Grass Move. Um, and that would be able to hit his entire team. Uh, and yeah, so... Was kind of surprising to not see a check to that, but he doesn't really have one on his team realistically. Uh, maybe High Dragon if I don't decide to run Fighting Coverage, I guess. Uh, but even that can't hit me for too much damage. Flash Cannon does no co, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I do end up losing Week One, unfortunately. But uh, like I said, Mianjar talked about it um, after the game. He said that the core of Cresselia and Umbreon was really, really annoying, and that my opponents in the future would have to watch out for that. Um, and I agree. <laughs> and um, another really great thing is that I don't have to phase Jar again this season. Uh, next week we are taking on Adam, the Bees Knees, and the Houston Soul Rockets, I believe. Uh, and then after that, I don't have to, like I said, I don't have to face Jar anymore this season. So, uh, maybe we'll meet again in playoffs. I'm hoping not, because I do not have a good track record against this guy. Uh, he's got my number, so, uh, yeah. But, uh, other than that, uh, speaking about other leagues, uh, I haven't been doing really well in other leagues either, actually. I've lost all of my week ones, uh, lately. I'm hoping to turn that around, but uh, I've I've been having trouble with the ladder. I've been having trouble with league format, everything Pokemon related. I've been doing really poorly lately, so hopefully I'm able to step it back up and uh, bring you guys some good games from here on out. So that's going to be it, guys. I hope you did enjoy. If you uh, did, make sure to leave a like down below. Make sure to go check out Jar in the description as well. Uh, make sure to check out all of the coaches, uh, the NPL channel, everything will be in the description down below as usual as with all of these videos. I encourage you to go check out all of their content because they've got some really good battles going on, especially for minors uh, and majors as well. Everything is really, uh, really high level. So yeah, that's it guys. Again, if you did enjoy, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.